So greetings, I'm Catherine Pfaff. I'm a math professor at Queen's University in Kingston, Ontario. And this is another lecture in this kind of set of lectures on what I would actually often give as, as a boot camp for students at Queen's University, uh, taken from some notes from when I was a postdoc at the University of California, Santa Barbara. And this is just some background material that I find that students often somehow miss and maybe get a little confused about if they did miss it. So today we're going to talk about sets. Uh, so I actually kind of didn't write that here. So this is introduction to sets. And I'll go through some of the basic notation uh, and definitions and so on. And I'll talk a little bit about how you would actually prove things, although the examples will come uh, in another video. Great. So without further ado, so let's start with the set definition. So and we're going to kind of use this. And one of the things I'm going to use this for is an opportunity to kind of practice breaking down a definition into kind of the different parts of it to understand what it's saying. So I'll do this in a number of the videos because I also think that this is something that's a little tricky uh, when you're starting out in higher math is actually kind of understanding how to work with definitions. So a set is going to be an unordered collection of distinct objects. Okay, and we'll go through this. I want to, here's the notation. Is this going to look like we're going to have a set of curly brackets and it's going to look like object, oops, that's not how you spell object, object, da, 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 object, and so on. So you're going to list all of your objects just like that. So that's kind of the notation. So the first thing, so we need to know, this is the name of the thing we're defining. Okay, uh, the, uh, the next thing to always look for is you kind of want to know what type of object you're talking about. So the next thing I actually identify in here is I'm talking about a collection. Okay, so the next thing is this is, so from there, this is going to be what type of thing a set is. So before I even am trying to identify if something's a set, I need that it's a collection, but then I'm going to want to know more things, okay? Uh, and so a collection of what? So it's going to be a collection of objects, okay? So this is right here, this part here tells me what the collection consists of, and this could be anything. Okay, so for example, so what are some things that we could have? I could have numbers, right? Right, so I could have like 1, 5, pi, that's perfectly good. I could have functions. Maybe I have cosine of x, and I have, uh, I don't know, x squared minus 2. You know, something like that, that's perfectly fine. I could have matrices or words. Other sets, or even a mix of these objects. This is the one that often confuses people. Oh my gosh, I have a set of sets. So maybe I have one set in here that's numbers, and then I have another set in here that's A, B, C. And then maybe that's all. Okay, so I have two objects. Each one is a set. I know that's confusing. Don't get confused. 
uh, other sets or even a mix of such objects. Uh, and now, so now we need to start kind of um, breaking apart the rest of this. So we know that this is a collection. We know what it consists of. It consists of objects. Uh, we know that the collection is unordered and the objects are distinct. So let's focus in on unordered. Okay, so a property of the collection... that the order objects are listed in doesn't matter. Okay, so let's kind of look at an example of this. So if I have... So here's, for example, uh, so if I have dog, cat, mouse, this is going to equal mouse, dog, cat. Okay, and then finally, uh, so now we have a property of the objects. Okay, so I have a collection, it consists of objects, a property of the collection is that I don't care about the order that I list things in. Uh, and then finally I have a, pro a property of the objects and that's that we want them to be distinct. So a property of the objects is that they must be distinct. Uh, so repetitions of objects in a set are simply ignored. So uh, repetitions of objects in a set are simply ignored. So for example, it wouldn't, we wouldn't write, we just wouldn't write a set like this. We wouldn't write a set like x, x, y, x, y. Um, we just write Uh, so this is just what a set is. This is just the definition. We kind of broke it into its parts. We don't care the order. So the objects can be anything, even sets, just to confuse you. Um, the order doesn't matter that I list them in. And then finally, we don't allow repetition. That's just not how we do things. Okay. So let's talk about, so there are different kinds of uh, language when we're talking about sets. It's going to be important. I feel like I might as well leave that for you. Elements of sets. Okay, so definition. The objects of the set are called the elements of the set.
Okay, so we're going to do, this is going to get a little tricky that this isn't exactly going to be able to correspond to what I have there. So these are the elements of the set. And by there, I mean my notes. Okay, so here we go. So here's an example. So my set is going to be done in, no, it's not going to be done in orange. It's going to be done in purple. Okay, all of a sudden my set is going to become purple. I believe that that was a, a property on the previous page. Uh, so, but that's okay. So let's say my set is cat, pie. So I'm doing this real mixing. I've got a word. I've got a number. I even want a matrix. And I decided to write like that. Okay, great. This is a set. We like it. We put some brackets around a list of things. We didn't repeat any things. We know that the order doesn't matter. Now, what if I asked you what the elements were of the set? Well, what do you really do? There's kind of a trick, which is just you just ignore the most outer brackets. Okay, so I just write down here are my elements. So cat's an element, pi is an element, and one, two, zero, three is an element. Okay, so these are the elements of the set. Okay, um, and I'm, I'm going to emphasize just because, I, as I kind of said, so once we remove the furthest outside curly brackets, right, once we remove these, we get the element, okay? So once we remove, And that's going to be really useful when I'm going to, you know, when you're going to try to do some of these quizzes. So what is left is a list of elements. Okay. Uh, so here's my notation. So the notation here is going to be important. So we have notation. Notation is mathematics. Notation is always important. You don't want to write out everything all the time or your life gets really crazy. Okay. So what does this mean? Uh, so if S is a set, this means that A is an element of the set S. Okay, so I'm assuming here that S is a set. And then we have, uh, so this is the same thing as saying that A is an element of the set S. Okay. And then we have notation if A is not an element of the set S. We tend to do the same thing to denote not, which is to just put a line through something. Okay, so we get that A is not an element of the set S. I want to do an example. Now I will finally erase my outline because I want this space. It's a little tricky during these uh, COVID times if I'm using my office and the board isn't as big. So, okay. okay, so here's an example. Okay, so for, so we're going to denote our set in purple. We're just going to keep with that because we like purple. So for S equals cat, pi, and the set with just three. Oops, that's supposed to be curly brackets. Okay. Uh, so what are the elements? So the elements, I remember I just get rid of the curly brackets. So the elements are... Right, so I had cat, I have pi, and I have the set. That's okay. I have the set containing three. I just got rid of the most outside curly brackets, not all of them. Okay. Um, and I will note here that this is a totally okay thing. Don't freak out. So yes, it's okay. Uh, sets can be elements of sets. So yes, sets can be elements of sets. Great. 
Okay, so using my notation over there, I have that so we have that cat is an element of s. We have that and, so what else? So we have that pi is an element of s, right? Cat was an element of s. When I removed the outside curly brackets, I had cat. I also had pi, and then I had the set containing three. Okay, so these are all elements of s. Okay, it's okay that a set is an element of a set. That's totally cool. Okay, but what's not in there? Dog is not an element of s. Cat is, dog's not, it's not listed there. And here's the one that's gonna feel a little weird is that three is not an element of s, okay? And I didn't make a mistake here. Okay, uh, so no, no mistakes. What's going on here? Uh, the set, the set containing three is an element of s. So this is an s. but the number three is not. Right? Why is it not? It's not because when I remove those outside curly brackets, I don't see three. I see the set containing three. Okay. So there's one more uh, kind of uh, set I want to list right now. Okay, and this is a very special kind of set. This is the one where we like to give everybody a headache uh, if you're trying to ever make uh, tricky questions to confuse your students. So the empty set right and we denote this like this is this set with no elements. So this is notation. This is cool. Okay, so this is the set with no elements. Okay, uh, so here's my big, uh, I learned this from, a student told me that they learned this from one of these professors here. I like this. This is like your danger or your warning in life. Okay. So, the empty set, the set with no elements, does not equal the set containing the empty set, right? Why does it not equal the set containing the empty set? Well, because it has an element, which is the empty set, so it can't be empty because it has an element. Which does not equal the set, the set containing the element, okay. How do you know that? You remove these outside brackets, right? And this contains a set containing the empty set. You remove these outside brackets and it's just the empty set. Okay. Uh, and then another warning here is that, so the empty set is contained in the set containing the empty set. Why? Remove the curly brackets. You see that? It is in there. Okay, and then you can do a similar thing here with the set containing the set containing the empty set. Great. Now, So subsets and equal sets.
Okay, so suppose, so we're going to start out with two sets. So suppose that we're going to have S and tau, or, or sorry, S and T, not tau. So S and T are going to be sets. Then definition, we have that T is going to be called a subset of S. Okay, so we need notation for that always, always, always. So how do we write this? So this is going to be written that, so we write T. This looks a little similar to the thing we had before, but it's just a curl thing and then a line underneath it. Uh, so T is a subset of S. Okay, so what was that going to mean? Uh, so I am of the, the school of thought that definitions are logically if and only if statements, so I always write if and only if. So every element of T is also an element of S. i.e. if we have that, so if S is an element of T, right, anytime that S is an element of T, we know that S must also be an element of S, and not just because its name indicates that, but that's just how this logic goes, okay? So it's kind of a weird statement uh, in that it's kind of, you know, uh, very much a logic statement which says that each element of T is an element of S. doesn't necessarily go the other way. Okay? Okay, so how do we prove this? And then there'll be a different video eventually with uh, actually examples of this. So how do you prove that T is a subset of S? Well, you take an arbitrary element of T and prove the element is in S. Okay, so let's again, they're just going to use our same notation here, our same color coding. Okay, so we're going to take an arbitrary element of T. And prove the element is an S. Uh, so here's a special example of uh, containment like that. So we have, here's a special example. Okay, so we always say that the empty set is a subset of set of S for each set S. Okay, now be careful about that. It's always a subset, it's not necessarily an element, okay? So if, right, so why? So if the empty set were not an element of S, I'm sorry, were not a subset of S, then there exists exist an element of the empty set which is not an S okay well what's wrong with that is that the empty set contains no element so this can't happen
Okay, so that's what it means to be a subset. It's kind of like one of these statements where it's each element of T must also be an element of S. Now, oh, and then we just need to remember that the empty set is always a subset, not necessarily an element, but a subset. And then how do you prove? I mean, it's an uh, if-then statement. So you take an arbitrary element of T, and then you prove that that element's in S. That's, that's how you prove that something's a subset of something else. Or specifically that S is a subset of T. Okay, perfect. Now, uh, so the last kind of definition I wanted to give in here is for S equal to T. So I'm still supposing that these are sets. And I'm going to have in this circumstance that S is actually going to equal T. Okay, so what does it mean? For S to equal T, well, this is going to be an if it, you know, so this is again like this, but we need, we need two things to be true. I'm going to kind of list them like this just to make it clear. There's two things. We need them both to be true. We need that S is actually a subset. Oops, my S was purple. We don't want to switch around colors on everybody. So we have that S is actually a subset of T. Okay, so if I'm going to prove this, first I have to prove that. So that thing has to be true, but also, and we need that T is a subset of S. So they need to contain the same elements is really what's happening. So if something's an element of S, it has to be an element of T. If something's an element of T, it has to be an element of S. They have to have the same elements. Right, so IE, they have precisely the same elements. Of course, the order in sets doesn't matter, so they don't have to be in the, listed in the same order. And you don't have duplicates, so you don't need to worry about that. Okay? Uh, but, so how do you show this? So, to show that S equals T, well, this is an AND statement, so I'm just going to do each of them. Okay, so we generally show, so first, each element of S has to also be an element of T. Okay, so right, so to show this, we need to show Okay, so we're going to show two things. The first one is that each element of S is also an element of T. In other words, i.e., we have that if x is in S, then it has to be in T. So if x is an element of S, then we need that that is also an element of T. Okay, so what are we doing here? We're proving uh, that S is a subset of T. Okay, so this is showing that S is a subset of T. Okay, ultimately that's what you're doing on that side. Um, and then we have to go in the other direction. We have to show that each element of T is also in S. So each each element of T is also in S. Right? So IE. So now we're going to go the other way. So we're going to say that X is going to start out being an element of T, and we need that that implies that uh, X is an element of S. So the same element X had better also be an S. And that's how we went the other direction. Okay. Okay. 